Hello, what's up everyone? This is Jaiko here and welcome to my thoughts video for the 12 minute game. Now for those of you who, who knows absolutely nothing about the game, don't worry, I got you covered. I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown what this game is first and then talk about what I think about it. The game is essentially a mastermind board game. right? There's a specific order that you have to do things and the whole entire game is to figure out what is the proper combination that you need to do. Now, as you can probably tell, this isn't exactly the most interesting gameplay in the world. Usually it's the backdrop or the story. That's what really gives color to the game. Now, unfortunately, uh, for the game 12 minutes, uh, the writing in the backdrop isn't exactly interesting either. So overall, I'll give this game a 7 out of 10. And as of recording, uh, because it is a new game, it is priced at 25 US dollars. Uh, this is not a price tag that I can recommend. In my opinion, the experience is more closer to $15, maybe $20 max. And what the story is about is, you know, you're a protagonist or the husband and you're stuck in Groundhog's Day, right? You're reliving the same 12 minutes over and over again. Not sure if it's really 12 minutes, by the way. I've never really bothered to check. Uh, but, you know, the objective is try to break out of this 12 minutes. Now, I'm going to leave out the ending and the plot twist here in case any of you guys want to play it. Uh, and if you want to see the endings only, then it'll be in the last two parts of my Let's Play series. Now, in these Mastermind games, I have a love and hate relationship. Right? There is absolutely a certain attraction or interest in these mastermind games, right? Trying to solve a predetermined series or a code, you know, through trials and error. But it doesn't change the fact that it is boring as hell gameplay, right? You really need a strong backdrop or, you know, a story to really attract people to continue playing your game. All right, so let's take other games for example, right? So game developer tycoon, the backdrop is that, you know, you're starting a small game studio and, you know, you're trying out different game genres and themes, how you can match them and see which one generates the most sales. And that is an interesting theme. And, and way back in the Flash game days, iMaze.com uh, has these grow series. I'll leave a link in the description below, but you know, iMaze in their grow series, they have a lot of interesting non-verbal storytelling, right? There's a lot of cute cartoon characters and animation. Uh, when you click on certain things, they develop the world or a story. And that's what makes the game, you know, want you to continue playing that Flash animation game. And for 12 minutes, you know, simply figuring out what happened, how to break out the loop, you know. Now, by all means, the writing is clever, right? As you're getting new information and getting plot twists along the way, it does provide a sort of a hook, but it's just not good enough, right? The mystery, the plot twist, all together is not good enough to cover up the boringness of an extended mastermind board game. Right? Another issue that I have is every new attempts I have with the entire cycle, some of the dialogues can be sped up, some of them can't, and near the end, I'm just sick and tired of all the dialogues. Like, obviously, the ones that cannot be skipped just gets repetitive, and I just wanted to finish the darn game. Now again, the price-wise, you know, normally I don't talk about it, but it's not worth the $25 price tag. You know, wait till it goes on sale, maybe for $15 or $20. Like, that's the price point that I would rec I can recommend this game at. I believe the cost is probably high because, you know, there's a lot of big names behind the voice acting in this game. Right? I would, you know, I would suggest to the developers, don't spend so much money on the voice actors. Right? Voice acting does enhance the game, but it is really the game itself that is providing the core experience. So again, as I mentioned earlier, my conclusion is this game is a 7 out of 10. Um, again, the writing in the backdrop of the game is mediocre, not really good enough to cover up the boring gameplay. Near the end, I really just want to be done with this game.
Um, again, and that's it. Thank you all for watching. See ya.